So are you using your God-given gifts to their full potential? John Bevere shares how multiplication is the key to maximizing the impact of the talents God has placed inside you. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're enjoying Table Talk. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest content. Well, every person has a gift and calling, but does everyone actually achieve their full potential? Today, with the help of our special guest, we'll take a look at how and why you should maximize talents to multiply the impact you're making for the kingdom. First, join me around the table is my dear friend, April Simons. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad to be here. Glad for our guest, but most excited to be sitting by your pretty mama. <laughs> I know. And we're so excited. My mother, Sandra Trammell, is here. Is this is her here. first time? No, she's been on before, all the way from South Carolina. How are you doing today, Mom? I'm doing great. Thank you. And I'm excited to be here. Oh, you just did perfect on your little <laughs> intro there. That was great. <laughs> Rachel, Michelle... Lamb Brown, Aww. can you <laughs> sit right next? You know, you're named after her, uh -huh. by the way. Michelle. This is Sandra, Sandra Michelle, Michelle, and you're Rachel Michelle. Yes. So can you keep Mama straight over there <laughs> during the program today? Mama is one in her own. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't keep her straight. She'll you keep her us own. straight, right? That's right. right. That's She'll right. keep us straight. I've got curly hair for her today. Yes, yeah, I know. You, she likes it when you roll your hair. And what you don't know, folks, is... Right under me right now is a leg that is sticking up <laughs> because someone broke their foot and has to sit. And, yes. I, and we're not going to show up. you, but you can't see it. But how are you doing? How's that leg doing? Or well, good news. They don't need to have surgery. So this is yay. All right. Praise Jesus. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank God. So on the road to recovery. So it's healing. It's Praise healing. the Lord. No pain. Yeah. I'm glad because I know you don't like to stay down. Nope. <laughs> Can't keep a good man down. <laughs> Kendra Kelly Dean, how are you? I am good. I am excited about this show because I think it's wonderful that we serve a God that has given a purpose to each person. Yes, and everybody. we get to fulfill that purpose. Yeah, you know, to each individual. That. So I love that. Even Rachel with a broken foot. That's Amen. right. Look yes, at her. that's yeah. right. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm great, thank you. And it is good to know that each and every one of us are so uniquely designed by our Creator that He's got great purpose for us. Right? He does. Yeah. And, yeah. and if people People stay tuned today. I think they're going to find out a little bit about how to steward that gift. And yeah, that's good. Well, when it comes us. to our understanding of what it means to be faithful, are we missing something? The answer might surprise you. Take a look. I travel and speak to leaders all over the world, and I have asked leadership groups many times, give me the definition of faithful. I hear consistent, dependable, trustworthy, true, devoted, loyal, and I could go on, and these are accurate definitions. However, what I have never once heard in a meeting or with an individual is that faithful is defined as multiplication. If you look at the parable of the talents, you have three servants highlighted. Two of them multiplied what was given to them. The master looked at them and said, well done, good and faithful servants. The only thing that they did in this parable is that they multiplied what was entrusted to them. The third servant, he maintained what was given to him and he was referred to as lazy. I want to hear the master say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. I have learned that you will never be fulfilled in life until you take the unique gifts that God's placed in you, you multiply them, and you impact your world of influence. In this book X, I want to help you discover your gifts, develop your gifts, and to multiply your gifts so you can change the world and have the joy and satisfaction that comes when you become a multiplier. Well, he is a world-renowned speaker and best-selling author, and we're so excited to have him back at the table with us. Please welcome our dear friend, John Bavia. Here he comes. <laughs> hey. Hello, everyone. Hello. Oh, my goodness. Hi, I Dad. love this program. I love this table. Uh, we John, always I have hope, so much fun. I hope you don't say that at other tables you go to. <laughs> I don't. I hope this is the only table. I okay. don't. You, you go. got it. Right. I was told not to okay. high-five you, but I will do it. No, no, no. That's how I can do it. So, <laughs> hey, you know what? It's so good to have you, and um, I see you've got a tan, and I think you probably 
have been playing golf, so I have to think about my precious husband who's with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Would want to go play golf if you were here right now. Who I love Aww. so much, and I cannot wait to see him when we get to glory. Yes. He is, was, is a remarkable man, mm, still yes. is a remarkable yeah, right. man. Well, you know, um, when, when I was looking through your book, I saw so many things that symbolically reminded me of Marcus because he was one of those people that truly did steward yeah. everything that God gave him in such an amazing way. And he, of course, gave God the credit for it. Yeah. But, Always. Um, like, to think where we started and what God has done is just an amazing story. And yet, you know, although everyone's not called to build a Christian television network, I mean, God has given us specific gifts and few people get to really walk into that and realize it. Yeah. I yes. mean, have you, did you, did you think about that as you were writing the book? I did. It, it really kind of, it, it started about seven years ago. One of our partners that have significantly helped us to give books all over the world. We've, we've now exceeded 50 million books all over the world oh, to wow. pastors and leaders. Wow. But, um, and, and that's resources, I should say. And he, um, he was in the car with me after a round of golf. And he said to me, you know, John, I just turned 50 and I've worked my tail off mm -hmm. uh, to build my businesses to where they are. He said, my net worth's over nine million. My wife's cared for life. My children are cared for life. He said, why should I work as hard in the next decade? And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is a moment. Yeah. Because what I say, this man's gonna shape his next mm -hmm. 10 years yeah, so true. and maybe longer. And I thought, rather than just give an off-the-cuff answer, I looked inside, and Joni, I said, Holy Spirit, I need help right now. <laughs> yeah. and, and instantly, I, the idea came. And I said to him, I said, let me answer your question with a different scenario. I said, I've written, at that time, it was 17 books. I said, there are in over 100 languages. I've gotten on planes and fly, flown now over 12 million miles. I've stayed in little 400-square-foot hotel rooms for as many as 229 nights in one year. I have eaten some of the craziest foods. I have, you know, fought jet lag. My wife's cared for life. My children are cared for life. Why should I get on another plane? Why should I write another book? And he laughed at me. Mm. And you know what he said to me? I wouldn't want to be in your shoes when you face Jesus. Yeah. I said, Stan, you just said the exact same words. And I remember we were on the downtown 405 in LA and he turns to me, now he's mad at me. He said, what are you talking about? <laughs> I said, Stan, every single child of God has a calling on yeah. their life. And I said, with that calling comes unique gifts to accomplish it. And I said, we can do one of three things with those gifts. We can use them only to build ourselves and our family. Number two, we can use them as intended to build the kingdom of God, which is building others' lives. Or number three, we can sit on them and do nothing. Yeah. And I said, the problem here is you've connected my dots. You see my gifts of writing and teaching, how they build the kingdom. You've not connected your dots. And I think that's what we're talking about here with people that are watching. We have a lot of people that haven't connected the dots of the value of what God has uniquely yeah. placed in them builds the kingdom. Yeah. And I, then I said this to him and he really got upset. <laughs> I said, your gifts are more valuable than mine. He said, what? How do you get that? I said, the Bible says the gifts that are not seen are more valuable than the gifts that are seen. I said, I have a seen gift. Yours is unseen. And I remember calling him six months later and I said, how you doing? Or he called me and I said, how you doing? He said, I've been haunted in a really good way by the words you, you spoke to me six months ago. I said, well, what are you doing? He said, I'm busting my rear end now to build my business up to 35 million so I can do more for the kingdom. Yeah. So I got a text from him six months ago and he signed it $70 million stand. Now that's the gift of giving. <laughs> wow. But we have people watching that have other gifts because yeah. there's so many gifts. Yeah. That you can't, you, some people say, well, they're exhaustive in the Bible. Here's the two big, three big mistakes I hear. Number one, they say Romans 9 is an exhaustive list. I don't believe that. Where's Akiana's gift of painting the Prince of Peace when she's eight years old? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't have done that. None of us could do that, yeah. right? Where is the surgeon's ability to remove a tumor in that list? I remove a tumor from somebody's body, they're dead. <laughs> Somebody that with that gift, they live, right? Okay, so there we go. Number two. People think if I'm godly, if I'm kind, if I'm sweet, my gifts will automatically work. That is such a lie. Yeah. There is not a more godly man in the New Testament other than Jesus, than Timothy. Paul said, I've never found a man with more Christ-like character than Timothy. Yet he had to write to him twice and say, your God-given gift is inoperative, engage it. Mm. So if just being godly engages the gift, that means Timothy would have had to engage the max, but he didn't. And number three, the thing that we have to realize is that all gifts aren't meant just to operate inside the church, which we have yeah. taken. 
99% of these gifts, and I'm talking to everybody listening right yes. now, usually yes. operate outside the church. True. True. In the home, in the neighborhood, in the ER room, in, in you know, we could go on, in education, yeah. Yeah. In, in government, in yeah, professional exactly. athletics. He, he, here's the thing that I find that a lot of believers don't understand. We've really done a good job of, of communicating our identity in Christ. Mm -hmm. That's so important. I mean, we're not unworthy worms because a lion's never given birth to a squirrel, right? Mm -hmm. God doesn't give birth to unworthy worms. He gives birth to sons and daughters. Right. The second thing that is equally as important that I find is not emphasized is what we're called to do in Christ. Yeah. Jesus makes this, makes this statement in John 4, 34. He said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and mm -hmm. finish his work. And then he makes this statement in John 20, 21, that as the Father sent me, I'm sending you. So what does that mean? My food, all of our food is to do the will. Yeah. Now in four decades of ministry, the top reason I see people backslide is they disengage from what they're created to do. Mm. And the reason is, yeah. when you stop eating food, you get weak. And when you get eat weak, what happens? You're vulnerable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it may manifest by they end up committing adultery or they end up just walking away from church unenthusiastic any longer. Mm -hmm. But it all started when they disengaged for what they were created to do because if it's Jesus' food yeah. that strengthens him, mm -hmm. it has to be That's our so food good. that strengthens wow. us. Wow. Yeah, and you, you know, one thing you said, I'm gonna let you ladies jump in, but I'm just like so excited here. But anyway, <laughs> um, like the comp it's like I tell Freddie, it's kind of like a computer. We're like a computer, but if we're not hooked up to the creator, it's kind of like not being hooked up to yeah. the internet. Oh, that's good. And so uh, mother is sitting here, and she knows better than anybody that there I was in Moonville, South Carolina, <laughs> this country girl. <laughs> Thank God I'm a country girl. <laughs> but, I mean, I wrote a letter to the Lord when I was 20 years old and put under my mattress and didn't even realize the power of the words that I said, God, I want to be in your perfect will for my life. And that was really my surrender, not having a clue mm, yeah. <laughs> what I was saying. But God was like, okay, let's hook her up. We're going to start her on the journey. And of course, Marcus Lamb came into my life. You were there for all of that, Mom. Absolutely. Who could have ever imagined, right? I mean, it's crazy. You, you, you can't imagine. I mean, you know, you just can't imagine. It, it's just... You never knew you'd be in South Carolina watching me at 6 a.m. every morning. No, there. No. <laughs> I think, I though, that. I think part of the problem, especially with the younger generation, is they want to do all these amazing things, but they don't know what they're supposed to do. So yeah. can you speak to that, yeah, figuring out good. what it is that your gifts are? Absolutely. I have an entire chapter on how to discover your gifts in there. So it, to, for me to try to cover that, it's very extensive, is really rough. Number one, you get it by seeking God diligently. Mm -hmm. The Bible says God rewards those who diligently seek him in faith, not casually seek him in wonder and doubt. Mm -hmm. And so I know for me, when I got saved, I started feeling, you know, I, I had my career planned. I was, mm -hmm. I was just about finished with engineering. I, I was on the dean's list. I was gonna go to Harvard, get an MBA, and I was gonna be really successful as an entrepreneur or in corporate America. And so God starts drawing my heart towards ministry, and I wanted nothing to do with ministry, but yet I felt, felt the drawing. So that's number one. Number two, what are the things that you like to do? What, what can you do that you can do for hours and say, I would do this whether I'm paid or not? Let me tell you something. What I do right now, I would do whether I was paid or not. I would write books. I would, I would preach the gospel because you know what? It's my passion. Yeah. It's my calling. That's another way. The yeah. other thing is who do you gravitate to? Yeah. All right. So now, um, you know, do you, do you, do you do gravitate to a certain type of people who do a certain type of thing? That helps you. The other thing is understanding mature people, having mature people who are going to speak to what they see in you, not speak to the limitations they think you have. Um, so there are many, many different ways, and it's not something you just get quick and easy. It's something you seek and search for. Um, I have and you start small. That's the other thing. Like, you don't go from A to Z. Yeah. Like, I started interviewing my grandfather in his 70s with the tape recorder under his chair, and he didn't know it. But, <laughs> I mean, that was one of my first interviews. So it, like you said, something you love to do. Yeah. But you don't start yeah, yeah. with the Daystar Television Network. You start <laughs> in Montgomery, Alabama with no money and bad cameras and volunteers. And God <laughs> sees if he can trust you all the way to here. And you'll never find your calling unless you have the heart of a servant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the whole, thing, the whole thing is everything we're called to do is to serve. I remember when I was just, you know, washing my pastor's car and taking care of their, he and his wife's personal needs. That was my job. I was a gopher. And you went from that, I mean, from, you know, go, you're going to go to Harvard to all of a sudden serving in ministry. Like, you didn't start where you are right now. So It was a slow process yes. up, right? But, but, but our incorrect thought was one day we'll get to the platform and we'll arrive. 
okay, that was so wrong. Yeah. Mm. Because God, I'm driving, the, I'm driving my pastor's car right, to get it washed, and God spoke to me, if I promote you wow. to wow. preach the gospel. And there was a big if on that. <laughs> he said it will be a promotion in serving. He said, you mess up now, it's dry clean shirts. You mess up later, it's people's wow. lives. Wow. Boy, you talk about putting the fear of God in you. Mm. So I realized, wow. hey, this isn't about being a celebrity. This isn't about being in a fame or limelight. This is yeah. about serving. Yeah. And, and the people who get into that position prematurely fall because they yeah. pursued yes. something that was unrealistic to the kingdom. Everyone serves in the kingdom. This is what I loved about, I love about you and Marcus. Marcus was a servant. He was a pure-hearted servant. He wanted to help people. Yeah, that's, true. that's the whole family. That translated down to you, Rachel. It that's translated right. to Becca. It translated to Jonathan. Yeah. And that's why we love and admire your family because you had a, a father who genuinely feared God and the fear of God will propel you to serve people, not yes. to be famous. Well, and that's what I wanted to say earlier was whenever you say yes to your purpose, it's not just about you, but there is a ripple effect. And had Marcus and Joni not said yes so many years ago, yes. by them saying yes, it created space for a lot of us in this studio today to Correct. say yes. But you talk about grace, and you say how it's not just a gift of salvation, but it can also be used as an empowerment tool to help you with your gifts as you serve. Can it you elaborate on It is empowerment. That? You know, we've taught grace is salvation. 100% correct, forgiveness of sins, 100% correct, free gift, 100% correct. But God defines it as his empowerment that gives us the ability to go beyond our natural ability. He said, my grace is sufficient for you for my power, referring to his grace, works mm -hmm. best in your weakness. So I know something about every single person that's watching this program. Mm -hmm. I know about their calling and I can tell you about it. It is impossible for you to fulfill your calling in your own ability. That's true. How do I know that? Because God says, I will never share my glory with anybody. So if God makes our calling capable of being accomplished in our own ability, then he has to share the glory with us. Oh, we're going to be in big so trouble if we think that. God on second. purpose <laughs> made our calling beyond our natural ability, yeah. so we'd have to depend on grace yeah, right. to right. fulfill right. it. You know, I was thinking about your family and just mm -hmm. your dad and, and knowing how he started. John Osteen mm -hmm. was one of Marcus's favorite preachers. Mm -hmm. um, but... You can relate to what we're talking about here oh, as well, can't you? I can, and I can say that, and I think you can speak to this, is sometimes we as believers or whoever we are, we put God in this box. Okay, this is what I'm doing. I, you know, I think about me. I was a, a preacher girl, preached, and I got offered a success to travel with this success seminar. Well, I had prayed God to expand me, you know, take me to places I've never been before, but my mind said, no, you're a preacher. This is your audience, but God wanted to do this so much more, and I ended up doing it and loving it, and don't you think sometimes we limit God to what, who we think we are and yeah. what we think we should be yeah. in a church? I was in a church all my life and did all this all Just my like life Joel ago. was behind the scenes. Yeah. And worked all those years oh making goodness. your dad look good, not yeah. knowing one day he would be there. Right. It's yeah. that Ephesians 3.20, exceedingly abundantly. Yes. And we can't, we got to take the limits off of God and what we think That's our life good. should be. So yeah. um, I have so many stories I could tell about this. But I think one of the most profound stories is when a Navy SEAL asked to meet with me. He was a Navy SEAL instructor. And I sat down and I said, what's your story? And we ended up having a two-hour conversation. He said... I grew up loving Jesus so passionately. I thought the only way to serve God was to go in ministry. Went to Bible school two years. He said, then third year I'm interning in a big church in the Northeast and I'm accused of sleeping with a girl in the youth group. He said, John, I never did it, but they believed her and they stripped me of everything. Three years of work, gone. And he said, you know, my relationship with God was about this big. Mm -hmm. And he said, I really sought God. That's what we went back to. And he said, God spoke to me and said, I called you to military, not to ministry. Wow. And he said, you know, I sign up for SEALs, and I don't realize that you have to swim. He said, I can't get any water in my ear because I'm in excruciating pain. I have tubes in my ear. He said, God heals my ear miraculously. And then he starts telling me about his missions and how God had saved him time after time after time. And I look at him now, and now he's helping, you know, even the, the programs teaching on these, these movies and TV sets how to be a Navy SEAL for guys that are acting. And his influence is so huge, and he's reaching so many people that in the acting world now, now because he's retired from being a Navy SEAL instructor. Well, what would he have done if he went and started a church and had a church of 100 exactly. people? Exactly. I mean, yeah, Jesus would have said, that was great, but can I tell you what I really... Yeah. Why didn't you really... 
really seek me about what you were exactly. called to do. Wow. And, and here's the thing, he will show you. Yeah. Yes. Okay, true. if you put a time limit on him and say, okay, I've prayed for two days and I still don't know, <laughs> so I'm giving up. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Seeking isn't just praying, it is everything in us is saying, I want to know what you desire. Right. And when everybody does that, he will show you. Awesome. You know, um, I was thinking that um, back mom where <laughs> when Marcus came for revival at our church, mm -hmm. our, at my home church, and we were walking out to the car. My mother was prophetic back then. and Tell yeah. everybody what you said to me. Oh, when I said he sure was cute. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said, honey, would you ever date him? And I said, mommy's a little too short. Yeah. Okay. At that point, I was only dating like, you know, 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, but yeah. he was, he's actually the perfect height. But like mother could even see like what was what was better for her daughter mm -hmm. than yeah. I, had, I had come out of a relationship, even though I was a good girl of God. But, you know, it's interesting how even our parents, godly parents sometimes can see things in the yes. kids. And I know you've probably been able to pick gifts out and help direct your uh, boys along with the Lord's help, right? Yeah, I mean, one of them worked for us for nine years and I, I had many talks with him. I said, is more important to me that you fulfill what God's called you to do in the work for us. He was miserable. Mm -hmm. And now he's off on his own business. He's having a great time. <laughs> yeah. and, that, and, I'm, and I'm as happy as can be because I said, it's more important to you, yeah. to me, that you're fulfilled yes. in what God has created you to yeah. do. Yeah. You know, Kendra, you said something that it jogged my memory from, from the book I wrote, Surrender All, which kind of, it would totally fit in with all this. But I remember I was writing one morning and and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, uh, write this down because it's so good. I didn't think of it. But anyway, <laughs> um, he said, he said, did you know that your lack of surrender mm -hmm. will have yes. a profound effect on those who are destined to be connected to your purpose? Mm -hmm. Wow. And so, you know, that's what I say to you today that so, so many of you, you're just like, John said, you know, you may have one talent or two talents. You're not really doing anything with it. But God is saying, listen, I've given you so much more. And in this time in the season, I have picked this time in eternity for you to live, which, by the way, is a very important season because the world yeah. is crazy right now. Oh and more than ever, we have got to have an ear to hear yeah. what yes. God is saying for us to do. Mm -hmm. Correct. And, you know, I just, I just believe if there's ever a time to be driven by eternity, it's right now. Because Absolutely. things are speeding up and things are crazy. And if we're not in tune, it could be damaging for us. Yeah. And so um, it's not the time to live on yesterday's word. It's the time to live on what God's that's saying good. right now. That's and that's good. what Jesus said. Man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I think it's time to say, hey, I can make plans for today, which we all should. Okay, but any interruptions, any kind of leadings, promptings to do something else, I got to listen to that. I mean, I'm writing a book right now, Joni, and I, I had a, a, a couple hours of miserable work, and um, <laughs> I, I, I was a little, I was a little upset, and 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 the Holy Spirit kind of enlightened me, John. I didn't really want you to write then. I wanted you to do something else, but wow. I was so focused to get this project that He told me to do the new book done. Yeah. I'm not doing it in the stride that he told me to do it, and I'm missing something else. I mean, it's just a critical time right now. Oh, yeah, timing is so important. I know as you're listening, because I've heard you talk about this before, but even seeing what this book says, Multiply Your God-Given Potential, you saw that lived out in your dad. Oh, my gosh, yes. I mean... I don't know if she can talk about him or not, but go ahead, try. <laughs> I mean, he just took what was in his hand and would steward what God gave him, and it's amazing to see what a life well lived looked like because he came from a small town with no background or experience in ministry. No one in his family was in ministry, but he had a call from the Lord. And I feel like when you do, you have to just surrender and follow and yeah. be obedient to what the Lord has called you to do. And it's amazing to see what God has done through an obedient heart. Yeah. It's more than he probably ever could have <clears throat> imagined. <laughs> you know, and like you said, you said something earlier, John, you said, well, you know, we helped everybody understand, you know, they need to have who, who their identity is in. It should be in Christ. But yeah, we still have a lot of millennials that are on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok and everything else. And they're, they're looking at their identity through those filters. And it's really important to get that right before you can really walk into. They're living out of their projected image. 
instead of their actual image. Mm -hmm. Which isn't even real. The way you, pro they're projecting themselves in a way they want to be perceived. That's true. Which the moment you do oh. that, the moment you do that, Paul said, you lose your identity in Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paul said, the moment I seek to project my image to men, to be mm -hmm. perceived in a correct way, is mm -hmm. the moment I no longer am the servant of Christ. So you just walk away from your servanthood by doing that. Yeah. And that's why it is a great tool I mean, don't get me wrong, we use it. I have a, one employee that works for us that all she does is our social media, but I'm not trying to do that to project, project an image. I'm trying to do that to help people to live better lives. Yeah. That's good. That's so good. Well, who needs to read the book X? Because when I first saw it, I thought... Is this a 10? They're like, no, it's a, it's a multiply. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we thanks, did, Rose thanks, and I thought about John Paul Jackson talking about the 10 giants. Yeah. And he, he did a whole teaching on that. He, he says, God's given you the ability to defeat the three, but with him helping, you can, you can defeat the 10. That's really good. So There's hey. multiple meanings to that. <laughs> it's the multiplication yes. sign. It's the 10 giants. It's yes. the X factor. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is a lot Who of, needs to read it, John? It's really a book written to everybody yeah. because yeah. everybody has something specific God has called them to do. And everybody, yeah. and this, this, this may sound kind of weird, but everybody should have an entrepreneur heart like, like Marcus in some form or mm -hmm. fashion. I don't care if you're a stay-home mom. Yeah. I don't care if you're an ER nurse. Good. You have to have that yeah. ability to mm -hmm. be able to try so things good. that others haven't, mm -hmm. knowing good. that it could benefit others. Yeah, and just like yourself, you and Lisa, I mean, when you, you guys were in college and you led her to the Lord, you could have never imagined <laughs> all that God had for you and the gifting that he had on the inside of you. No. But he gets the glory for it. They were fruitful and multiplied. <laughs> yes. Pastor John Hagee told me one time, you actually truly haven't fulfilled that verse until you've had three children. Because if you have <laughs> two, you've only replaced yourself. Yeah. You have not multiplied. I had three. <laughs> I had three. Well, anyway, John and Lisa did their due diligence. And we are out of time. I want to encourage each of you to lean into those giftings that God has given you and understand that no gift is too small or unimportant. There's purpose in every gift. And like John said earlier, you know, um, I didn't really know all that I had on the inside, but God did. And, and that was so good that you said, well, you know, a lot of people, well, he's going to make me do something that I don't want to do. No, no, no. Think about what you love doing. Yeah. Yeah. Usually it's connected mm -hmm. to that. And for me, I got to sing, write music, yeah. interview people. I mean, I would just pay to be able to have the opportunity to do this because I love it so much. Well, if you're watching today and you need prayer, maybe you need the Lord to reveal that gift he's placed on the inside of you. Or maybe you know your gift, but you need his guidance and the timing like John is talking about on what to do with it. Well, again, that's why we exist. That's why that toll-free number's on the screen. We have prayer partners that are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can go to the phone and call. If you do happen to get a voicemail, leave your name and number. I promise you, a real person will call you back. It's our privilege, our honor to pray with you. You can go to daystar.com, click on prayer. We pray over all the prayer requests that come into Daystar from around the world. Again, I want to thank John for joining us at the table. I might have a picture or two to put up with John and Lisa from years ago. Uh -oh. You might see that right there. Be sure to pick up a copy of his book, um, Multiplying Your God-Given Potential. And for more on his ministry, you can visit him online at johnbevere.com. Also, don't forget to join the conversation online by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. We'd love to hear how this table talk has touched your life. Thank you so much for watching. Be encouraged today. Be encouraged today. You have been sitting there, but you're about to get up and walk into what God has for you. At the end of the day, you're going to give him the glory for it. Yep. And it's going to be beyond what you can imagine. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today. Bye.